Hi, uh, I am Tiffany Jernigan. I am a developer advocate at VMware. You can ask me what that means if you don't know afterward, <laughs> but it includes doing stuff like this. So yeah, um, I have my Twitter up on there. On further slides, there's also my Mastodon, which I wish it was shorter, but you know, it's a whole thing, but it's there. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be talking about like getting started with uh, Kubernetes users and permissions without just using cluster admin. Come on. All right, try to. That, there we go. All right, so we have two different types of auth. There's authentication or authen, which is who are you? So it could be any one of you people, it could be like a robot or whatnot. And then there is authorization or authy, and that is what are you allowed to do? For instance, you could be like, hey, you are you, Bob, are allowed to be at this conference and attend someone's talk, but no, you're not allowed to throw like food at the speaker or something like that. All right, so first we're gonna talk about authent and provisioning users. So Kubernetes is very flexible here. You can use TLS certs, maybe with your own CA or not, but since the Kubernetes API server doesn't support revocation, you should definitely use short-lived certs. Don't have ones that are like, here, I'm gonna have this last for like five years and cross your fingers and hope nobody else gets access to that. Instead, try to do something maybe that like, you get a new one every hour or something like that. You could also use OIDC tokens with any OIDC provider. It's something like in-house, for instance, like Dex or Keycloak or SaaS like Okta. And then that in turn can plug into your cloud's IAM. For example, you can map your cloud provider users to your Kubernetes users. You can also deal with service accounts to provision users as well. So as a little fun note, in Kubernetes, you don't really create a user. You give, for example, create pods permissions to say, Bob. And as long as someone shows up with a valid cert or like an OIDC token for Bob, then they can create pods. So there's like two main site things that interact uh, with like Kubernetes that are either humans, which I, as far as I'm aware is probably all of you. Um, and then there's robots, I don't know, we'll see. Um, so for humans, it, you can do things with like TLS, uh, OIDC, service accounts, et cetera. With robots, that's basically usually used with service accounts. So starting off with certificates. So the commands, here, um, show you how to create a certificate signing request. You might see that listed as CSR in short in a lot of places. This example is using OpenSSL because it's super widespread and you probably have it on your machine by default. I'm using a Mac and it was already there. I didn't have to download anything. Um, many folks though might prefer using something like CFSSL, which is Cloudflare's, or maybe they wanna use Vault or some other certificate authority and that's usually shortened to CA. And then after that, you then transfer the CSR to the CA. And depending on what kind of cluster you have, this can be done differently. So for example, if you are using a self-hosted cluster or you're using like kubeadm, basically where you have access to the nodes of the control plane. And if you want to do like some experimentation, um, here is a specific example that you could be using. Um, this example assumes that we have a cluster deployed with kubeadm for this one, and that the CA keys live specifically in Etsy Kubernetes PKI on the control plane. And, you could, and then like, for instance, the one, two, three, four, you could have as something actually meaningful to you. So another method with certificates is going through the CSR API. So this is what, if you want to deal with certificates, this is the route you'd have to go down if you're using a managed cluster since you can't actually get, again, inside of the control plane on a managed cluster. Like this one works for managed and self-hosted basically. Um, so the CSR API is in the Kubernetes API so you can get certificates from it. It basically makes Kubernetes act as a CA. And this is what you would apply with kubectl. It might be a little harder to read back there. There's a bunch of lines, but basically what it's doing is it's giving the request, 
which is that uh, file that we, the CSR file that had been um, dumped out from uh, OpenSSL previously, and it uses that. So like this whole part dealing with the CSR API, you're interacting with Kubernetes with kubectl. So after you create the CSR, then you need to actually go and approve it. So you could do kubectl certificate approve, and then like my thing is like user equals a Lovelace. The user equals is just so that like it, it's not required. You could just have Ada Lovelace or whatever you wanted there. It's just so like if you were searching and you wanted to go based on what you're defining as a user, you could see all the people are like that. Um, and then what you would need to do is to retrieve the certificate. So then you d just do a get on the CSR. Um, you'd get the, and then you would do a base64 decode on user.crt. And then you give that file back to the user. So once you actually have that, um, then you can pass in your key and the CRT file over to kubectl config, which is basically adding the certificate and the key to your kube config file. All right, so now certificates are out of the way for a bit. So the other, one of the other things is tokens. So if you have a conceptual understanding of TLS, then you probably have one for OIDC as well. Things are different depending whether you're using a self-hosted cluster or if you're not. And if you are, uh, there's two flags up there uh, that you need to add. So one for the OIDC issuer URL and one for the OIDC client ID. On managed clusters, you want to use the OIDC with the provider. Basically, there is often like a quasi-transparent like integration with IAM. And generally, that is with using OIDC under the hood. And it will then automatically be using IAM or something else and just like do that for you. Um, there's some links that tell you a little bit more about it. Like one is like it's specific for um, uh, EKS, but obviously there's, there should be guides for all the other ones as well. There's just kind of limited space on this slide. So I just picked one. Um, so, and then if you're not using a cluster like that, then if you are say already using something like vault inserts, or you're just like truly invested in certs already, you probably still want to just keep using TLS certs versus starting and trying to figure out everything with tokens with OIDC. And if you're not already using TLS certs, uh, you may not want to get started there just for that at that point. Um, service accounts are typically used for say like processes, programs, services that are running autonomously on a cluster, but nothing's gonna stop us from using them to manage access and permissions for users. Even if that's not really what they were meant for in the first place, but you can do it. So for the demo I'll be doing, I'll be using them for demo purposes, and you can too. Um, if you don't like want to go the right way through like setting up a bunch of hoops to actually deal with setting up TLS certificates or OIDC based authentication. So like if you're, especially if you're just trying to start and figure stuff out at the beginning, it's a really good way to go about it. Um, so a service account is, yeah, it's just a user with some funny looking name thing there. Um, it's like system service account and then whatever namespace that you are in and then the name of the service account. So then there's, since we're talking about tokens in this space, so there are also service account tokens. They are JSON web tokens, or JOTs. They're like OIDC tokens, but they are generated by the Kubernetes control plane. Specifically, it's a controller in the controller manager. And by default, um, Kubernetes will, um, like if within your container pod, uh, Kubernetes will automatically place a token in, that, in a file, specifically under that location, which we'll actually take a look at during the demo. And that token is a token for the service account of the pod that that container belongs to. All right, so enough about that type of auth. Now let's go to the other type of auth. So we're gonna look at AuthZ and specifically role-based access control or RBAC for short. If you hadn't noticed, there's a lot of acronyms. They love the acronyms. So a high level idea of it on Kubernetes is that first you define a role or a cluster role. So like a role would be specific to a namespace, a cluster role would be well for your cluster. And that is a collection of permissions, like things that can be done. So 
things like listing pods, creating deployments, setting the scaling for like a specific deployment, and a bunch of other things. Um, after you create that role or a cluster role, then you would, like it exists, but it doesn't actually do anything. So you need to be able to bind that role or cluster role to say like a user or a group or a service account with using a role binding or a cluster role binding. If you're wondering, oh hey, what can I actually do? So say my resource is a pod. What can I do with a pod? Like how do I see whether I can do a get or a list or a watch or a patch or whatever those things are? Um, you can actually find that out using kubectl and it will basically spit out a thing of what you can actually do with it. And you can, depending on like where the group is, like you, you may, maybe it's in V1, maybe it's not. If you're wondering, hey, where is it located, you could just do kubectl API space api-resources and figure out where it's located. All right, so this is the default service account that gets created for whatever namespace you are creating. So this is CNSC because that's a short abbreviation. Uh, for this conference, um, and then it just creates a default one. Then here is an example role for getting pods. So you can see like in resource you have pods and then the verbs are get and list. So the reason you have both is, say if you were like, I have an Nginx pod. Um, if I have just get, I could do a kubectl get pod Nginx. If I try doing kubectl get pods, it doesn't, it can't do that, it needs a list. And then you need to have the role binding. So you can see that this basically it has the role, the get pods role, and then it has the service count, which is the one that I've been talking about. Um, there's also fun stuff with auditing, and of course I noticed that I hadn't fixed this before we got in here and I didn't fix it now. The first line is supposed to say kubectl auth space can I dash dash list. Um, I'll fix that later, but, um, and then there's a bunch of other tools that aren't specifically built in that you can get like plugins for. All right, so demo time. After I fix that. There we go. Let's pretend that never happened. All right. I clear it and then it just comes right back. All right, so first, uh, let's make sure that I did delete the namespace. So if we get namespaces, all right, cool. So there's just a bunch of the initial stuff. So if I do a create, create namespace of like Cloud Native Security Con. All right, um, so there's this really cool tool called KubeNS that um, Ahmet Albalkin created that makes it so that you can switch between namespaces that you're currently in, so you don't have to do the dash n and then give it the namespace every time, which can be really annoying. So if I do a kubeNS and then that, so now I am in that one. So if actually if I just ran kubeNS, you can see that I'm specifically in there. All right, so I'm just gonna create some deployments. We will see why in a bit. How's the internet, everybody? <laughs> All right, so I'm just, they're both using Nginx because they are, they spin up. I don't have to do anything weird to make sure that it stays running and whatnot. All right, so if I did a K get pods, oh yeah, and I can't remember already mentioned this. Uh, the K is me being lazy and aliasing kubectl to K because I don't want to type that. I already like my tab completion and everything else. So, um, all right, if we do a K get pods, you can see the two that are running there right now. So like basically, um, however my cluster is set up, I have in effect like cluster admin permissions. I can, if I wanted, I can go and delete these. I can scale the deployments that are there, all that fun stuff. How about what if we go inside of a pod? So if I do, oh my gosh. Okay, so there's this cool thing called nixery.dev. It basically ends up giving you a container image that has these things that you list with slashes installed in it already. So like shell, kubectl, curl, jq. It's, it's really handy. The internet was nicer to me when I demo run this. All right, so now if we try to do a kubectl Oh 
Oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm on the same cluster, but now it's it's throwing up and saying I can't do this. So like it might be hard to read because of how it's wrapping it. But basically, it's saying that my that weird name my user like with my namespace of CNSC and default, which is again the default uh, SA that gets created. Uh, I don't have the ability to uh, list like pods in this namespace. So basically, we need to fix that. So we can do that by creating a role and a role binding. So we don't have to right now we don't have to create a service account because well, I'm just going to use the default one. So if I do k create role, all right. So this thing I'm just calling it get pods. Um, verb is just whatever type of action you're going to be doing. So I want to be able to do a get and I want to be able to do a list and I want it specifically for the pods resource. So I created that if you want to take a look at it. Um, we can see basically the API groups, the resources are pods, and that I want to be able to do a get and a list. So then, now, so we have the SA, we have the role, now we actually need to do a, bind them together. So if I create role binding, so this one you give it the role, and then you give it that service count. So that's the name of the service count that we have right now. So now, if I do a cube pedal get pods, I can actually see them. Okay, so that's cool. So now let's, has, has anyone tried using like dash v6 or like up to the verbosity on a cube cuddle command before? All right, see two people. All right, so if we did the get pods again, if we do dash like v6, you can actually see what address is being used for these requests. So if I go and copy this, I could go and try doing a curl. I'm going to do dash h k, which is technically dash dash insecure because, like, I know this is my cluster. I trust it. This is a demo. Um, I don't really like. I'm not worried that whatever the API is there or is giving back to me is like garbage or some crazy stuff. For now, um, so if I do dash k, and then I give it the URL there. So, okay, now it, it's failing. So, like, what's going on here? Because I just did a cube cuddle command to get pods. I have, my, uh, I have my role binding and everything, but it's telling me I can't do it. If you specifically look there, it says that you are system anonymous. It's because it doesn't actually know who you are. So, in order to fix that, you need to actually give it the service account token. So, and remember that this right side is within a pod that's in this cluster. If we look in this one location, we can see this lovely token. This, looking at this, you're just like, okay, it's a bunch of gibberish, like, I guess that's your token. Um, if we go and copy this, and slide the correct, Direction? There we go. Um, if you go to jwt.io, you can actually dump it, your encoded stuff in there and dump it out and actually mean something. Um, so I'm not sure if it's really legible. So basically, you can see I'm, I'm using a GKE cluster. Um, you can see the namespace is CNSC. Tester is that pod that I am currently in. And then my d default service account, and you can see all that there. All right. Cool, so we have that. Great, so now what we do with our new, with our curl is now we give it a header. So authorization bearer, I always can do this wrong. Okay, I need to save my token. So I can just call it like this. Come on laptop. I have faith in you, sometimes. No faith? I didn't be that way. What did, what did you say I did? Uh, oh yeah, whoops. I'm tired. All right, okay, token. Um, yeah, so uh, 
back to what I was saying is we end up, so we do, if we do the curl, give it dash H, oh my gosh, authorization bear token. I did, author, uh, this is why people shouldn't let me type. All right, so if I pass that into JQ and gave it the items dot metadata dot name. Man, this is so slow. Hello? Okay, yeah. So there you can see the pods that we had um, before. Okay, so with the whole dash K thing, let's get rid of that now. Um, if we look in this same folder, oh my goodness, hello. Trying. Not, okay, wow, all right. Um, you can see here that there's a CA CRT file in here, so instead of this lovely dash K, you do CA cert. Oh my goodness. And it still works. Okay, so um, as of one of the more recent versions of Kubernetes, uh, service account tokens are bound by default. So let me show you what that means. So this token basically is bound to that pod. So if I were to go over here, and basically I'm creating another pod just like the other one, and so if I were to go and just make token equals to that same thing, oh, not, not that. And then if I go and copy this exact command, you can see that I can still run it, right? So now what happens if I decide that I don't want this pod anymore? Depending on how slow my internet is, um, this might take a million years to go away. Um, but yeah, so that wasn't a thing before. Like, it, I think, I can't remember specifically, it may have been 1.21, but you'll need to verify that. Um, depending, okay, wait, let's see. All right, it's gone. All right, so now if I were to try doing that again, I now got unauthorized because that token was bound to that pod and it now it has vomited and no longer works. Okay. So that's just like that basic stuff of that. So, and since everything's going slowly, I'm gonna see what I can quickly get through in the next, I believe I have 10 minutes, because technology, it loves you and it hates you. All right, so we were using a default service token, so now let's go and create one. So if I create a say, so I can call it scalar. Um, basically what I'm gonna do is create something that I can go and scale a deployment. So if there's some built-in cluster role and cluster role bindings, for instance, like there's, like if you did a, I'll just do it, okay, get a cluster role, grab view. Maybe I shouldn't try doing a thing like that and getting a grab, but there's a thing that you have that is called view. So I could do k okay, create cluster role binding, I can give it that cluster role that already exists, which lets me view a bunch of stuff and do nothing else. It's basically read permissions and give it to my service account. And while we do that,
Okay. So if you are specifically dealing with a if you're trying to create a pod with a specific service count, since this one isn't the default one anymore, I act, there used to be a way to do dash dash service count. I don't know why it got removed. I wish it didn't. So now you have to actually do with overrides, which is special. So yay, JSON. Um, so then I give it that. I swear it's way faster an hour ago. I hope everyone's first day of this conference is going well. <laughs> um, yay. Okay, so if we do a, oh my goodness. Hello, letters. I guess worst case, if this, if this actually fails, I can walk you through what actually happens because I threw all this stuff into my slides too. No, my goodness. I feel like I've gone back to the early 2000s. Okay, well that's, there we go. So get all doesn't actually do get all, but it gets a bunch of stuff. So my view is letting me see all of that stuff. Um, I'm not gonna try typing in, if I were to try deleting stuff right now, it would fail. I'm not going to try that because I'm just gonna fail. So. Um, what I want is to be able to create a, deploy a way to scale. So I could create a role. All right, so let's see. So I can call that scalar because I'm lazy. Um, so when you're m messing with something like replicas, uh, you which or like scaling, you would do a patch. So it gets the resource of deployment slash scale, and then I want to do it only on the nginx one because you remember I have nginx and I have web. So I create that. I guess while it's doing that, if I do a kubectl scale deploy, except for the problem is I have typing issues. So, all right, scale nginx replicas equals two. Yay, internet. So what will eventually happen if I run that right now, it's gonna vomit because I don't have the permissions to do it. Oh wow, I'm unable to connect to the server. Yay, internet. There we go, okay. Raise your hand if you had a demo be this painful at a conference. <laughs> Sweet, thanks for commiserating. <laughs> okay. So if I try doing it right now, it says that I can't patch deployment slash scale in there. So if I go and create that role binding, now I can scale that. And if I were to try scaling web, it fails because I specifically named the resource. Okay, so now, we, okay, we have that, but right now I'm using like view. That means I can see everything. What if I only want to be able to just get that specific deployment? So what I would want to do is first delete uh, that cluster role binding. If I were to try scaling this back down to one. I can't because like in order to be able to actually do anything with it, I have to first be able to see it. I can't actually get it. So what we could do is we could do an edit on the role that we have called scalar. I can use my really terrible VMs, Vim skills, copy this, paste it. Change that to just deployments and get. So now, Theoretically, I can scale that. But so if I did a cube cuddle, get like say if I tried get all again, I can't do that. If I did a cube cuddle, get deployments, can't do that. If I want to do nginx, I can and I can scale that. And that's basically all that I can do with that. Um, let's see. Yeah. So. I think that's everything for that part. 
Um, and if you just wanted to see what would happen if you did the raw, um, it's kind of like thrown out, this shows a bunch of stuff, but like say, what, for instance, services slash proxy, you can see what the verbs are that you can actually go and use. And then also, now that I have these permissions, if I do a cube cuddle, uh, can I, and then you can do, you can do a can I, and then like do a specific thing. There's also, eventually, a way to do dash dash list. Maybe if you hit enter more than once, it'll make it work. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Okay. Um, so you can see down, so there's a bunch of stuff that is here by default um, that you all normally see, like the ones up here, APIs, et cetera. But the ones that I, these ones here are specifically there because I added them with my role and my role binding. Okay. Um, if we go back over here. Oh yeah, so yeah, demo, that, that just happened. Um, it's kind of janky. I will try f making it look better when I actually post it, but I thought it would be useful for, because a lot of times people will post, here's my code for my slides, and then they put the word demo, and then it's like, well, if the, you don't have the, say you don't have the video, or you don't like watching videos, okay, where's the demo? So I attempted uh, last night um, to do this. So basically, it goes through every single thing that I did today. Um, hopefully there's nothing wrong with it. I have comments and stuff in there too, but yeah, it's just, all basically all things with the default namespace, uh, service account, bound service account tokens, um, creating new essay, like factory roles. So like, as in like using that cluster role that's already there. As you noticed, even in my demo, I did not give cluster admin permissions. Don't do that. And scalar, and yeah, it's just a bunch of slides of that. Um, this is, so I learned through uh, Bernard's talk that apparently you can actually, there's actually a way to like put a review on the SCED app. Didn't know that. I don't know how many people actually are logged in and it only has smiley face, sad face, or a line. So you don't have to log in. So here's a little link thing. I would super appreciate if you could give me some feedback because I would, like this is my second ever security talk and I want to improve on what I'm doing. So. Yeah, thank you everybody.